Yo, what's up guys? My name is Mr. Freeze 2244 and welcome to the latest update for Hitman. These are the patch notes for the latest update at 3.180. And it's our first patch we've had since October, I believe. So yeah, it's been quite a few months. Uh, I expected this patch to come out tomorrow. Uh, that's when the new Elusive Tide comes out. Well, I say new. It did come out with Hitman 2. When was that? 2018? November 2018? So it's been nearly just over five years since we've actually had this Elusive Tide. Damn, man. Time has gone quickly. Wow. So, as usual, all these patch notes videos, I'll leave the most important stuff on the screen, but I will be going through the entirety of the patch notes, see if there's anything good in there, and we shall, uh, well, let's get into it. See what we've got for the latest update. Right. From the top, it says, uh, Welcome to the first patch notes of 2024 for Hitman World of Assassination. Alongside the return of the Undying, new challenges, and curated contracts, we bring you more than 200. It says 200, and then it, and it says the word 100 as well, so it's 200, 100. Improvements, fixes, and additions to the different areas of the game. Enjoy, and happy hunting. Right. The first thing it shows is the image, this image right here of the Undying Pack. So there's a premium content that's going to be added, which is out now, I believe, uh, which contains a bunch of DLC cosmetics. So it's a suit. You get an explosive pen there. There's some surround earphones. There's a little flash robo thing. And some safe house cosmetics for freelancer. And there's an arcade mode contract as well. I'll go through all that and the pricing a little bit later on into the patch. But yeah, it's uh, our first DLC cosmetics since freelancer first came out. So we'll see and we'll get into that. So patch details. Hitman World of Assassination will be updated to 3.180 on all platforms. PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, PC and Switch. Maintenance starts at 10 a.m. UTC and is expected to run to at least 1.30 UTC. But by the time this video is out on YouTube, all the servers should be up by now anyway. So it should be all good to go. Uh, the patch size is between 2 to 7.5 gigabytes on all platforms. No need to update on the, the Nintendo, obviously, because it's a cloud, all that kind of stuff. So it's already updated as soon as you start kicking into it and playing it. Uh, the Elusive Target, the Free Starter Pack, and the Undying Pack will be available after the maintenance period on the 22nd of March around 1.30pm. So it says it's going to be after the maintenance period, which is today, uh, but all that stuff is not released till tomorrow. It's fast confusing, I don't know. Maybe the Elusive Target is live right now, I don't even know. But today is Thursday, so it's a bit strange. New content. The Undying season is now underway with exciting new content, including the sought after return of the undying featuring sean bean the undying will be available for free for everyone for the first time ever as part of the free starter pack for new players as well as an elusive target for players who already own hitman world of assassination in addition to the return of the undying we are introducing a new twitch drop as well as new challenges to the season's content first up the elusive target the undying the Undying Elusive Target featuring Sean Bean finally returns to the World of Assassination. Mark Faber is famous for his uncanny ability to rise from the dead, having been confirmed killed more than 25 times. It is now your job to finally put the Undying in the ground for good. So you're tasked with putting Sean Bean down in the grind, Roy Noy. Sorry for the Irish accent there. Not even Irish. For the first time ever, the free starter pack players will have the chance to experience the Undying mission in the Ouroboros, a three-level arcade contract featuring the Undying, the Undying Elusive Target, available for free to everyone. In this game mode, players will be tasked, tasked with multiple escalating missions. Upon failure, progress will restart from the first level and the contract will be locked for 12 hours until the player can attempt to play the contract again. The original one chance only elusive target will be available to the World of Assassination players. So I reckon they just they should just release all the elusive targets anyway like this and just set this 12 hour limit thing with all the elusive targets so let people play all the elusive target contracts and just do the same 12 hour rule. It's still you still technically being punished for you know for making a mistake or something like that but yes but anyway it's the first time they brought out an arcade contract for like it's what seems like about a year since we've had an arcade contract so i will be going through that it's basically an escalation let's, let's just be honest it's a looser target escalation but with just one looser target it seems so yeah that's uh, that's all coming um it says the i think i think they said on twitter earlier that it was the arcades out now i can't confirm that 
Uh, apparently the arcade is out now, and uh, the illustrious target is out tomorrow. So, what I my plan to do is release this patch notes video today, do the elusive target tomorrow with a definitive guide with three methods, as I usually do with elusive targets, and then tomorrow I'll also be uploading the arcade walkthrough, and on Saturday I shall be doing a showcase of the DLC cosmetics to let you know, and if, so you can make your own decisions if you think it's worth it or not. Um, I can only give you my opinion, and if it's... Uh, well, you can see for yourself when, it, when the video comes out. So, anyway, moving on to the, in these next portion of the patch notes, it says here's how to access the free starter pack for new players. On Steam, you can download Hitman Free Starter Pack on the Wall of Assassination Steam page. It shows you a link there as well. So again, if you are a Steam a player on PC for Steam, uh, go ahead and click that link if you haven't got Hitman and you want to play it for the first time on Free Starter Pack. Go ahead. On the Epic Games Store, you can download the Hitman World of Assassin Free Starter Pack there, so there's another link for that. On PS4 and PS5, you can download the Hitman World of Assassin Free Starter Pack from the PlayStation Store. On Xbox One, Series X and S, it's the same sort of thing. You have another link there. Again, you're going to have to click the link in the description for the blog post of all that. And it says, additionally, we are releasing a brand new DLC to all platforms, is what I just discussed. The Undying Pack, which includes the Ouroboros, a three-level arcade contract featuring the Undying as well as cosmetic art. Okay, so the contract is actually a part of this DLC. Okay, so it's not free for starter pack players. I don't understand what it's trying to say. It's either free or is it isn't. It's either a part of it or it isn't. Which is it? I don't understand that. I don't know. I think they've got themselves confused. I think they're referring to the Elusive Target himself. I'm pretty sure that's free for free starter pack players, but I'm not sure the arcade contracts is free for free starter pack players. It's very confusing. Anyway, I'll read it, I'll read it out anyway. It says, additionally, we will be releasing a brand new DLC pack to all platforms, the Undying Pack, which includes the Ouroboros, a three-level arcade contract featuring the Undying, as well as cosmetic items, priced at $4.99, €4.99, and £3.99. The Undying Pack includes the Ephemeral, suit with eye patch. I, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Kronstadt Mini Flash Robo XO, XOI 2900, which is basically a, a robot which is a delayed flashbang. A Kronstadt Explosive Pen Gen 2. So we already had this uh, when the original tag came out. Uh, so basically it's just a it's essentially a knife that explodes after a few seconds. Think golden eye and with the pen uh, what's next? I so said a set of six cosmetic items for Freelancer Safe House inspired by the iconic Elusive Target mission and a Robberus 3 level arcade contract featuring the Undying Elusive Target. The Elusive Target will be available for approximately four weeks from March 22nd. And that covers the Elusive Target portion. So, Twitch drop Purple Streak Duck. Alongside the launch of the Undying 2024, we will be releasing a brand new Twitch drop the Purple Streak Duck. Link your Twitch account to your IR Interactive account and simply watch your fellow agents on Twitch to unlock this brand new item. For a reminder on how to earn this reward, you have to link your IR Interactive account to your Twitch account. Watch a cumulative one hour of Hitman Ward of Assassination on Twitch between March 22nd and March 31st. It's just, uh, is it 10 days? 9, 10 days? Uh, any streamer playing under the Hitman Ward of Assassination category on Twitch is eligible for drops. Please be aware that both the streamer and the viewer must link their accounts before progress can be made towards earning the Purple Streak Duck. For more details, please see our Twitch Drops FAQ. So if you are joining a stream this weekend or something like that for, uh, to get this Twitch Drop, make sure the streamer has linked his account as well, because otherwise it's not going to work. Just make sure you do that. It's a nice little purple little, little looking duck though. I don't know what it does. I don't know if it's just a regular explosive or it has some sort of gas element to it. I don't know. Next part is the new challenges. I wanted to talk about this as well. I was going to do a separate video on it, but I thought I'd just mention it here right now. A new challenges. It says the... the I don't know how to say that word. It's O-O-S... O-O-C-Y-A-N-I-N. So I want to say Usainin. Usainin Hunt. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It says, Happy hunting in Berlin and try to complete the challenge to unlock the blue egg. We also have two new challenges inspired by Hitman forum user Luke FSGJE. Let us know which other challenges or challenge rewards you would like to see in-game. 
Uh, new challenge, Forged in Fire. Use your disguising skills in Ambrose Island to unlock the Burial Dagger. New challenge, The Great Thief. Blast your way in Golden Handshake mission, which is the New York mission, to unlock the Golden Sword of Bartoli 12 gauge. And I wanted to talk about the blue egg, actually. So it's, it's the same uh, egg you get in the, the Easter egg hunt. So if you don't remember uh, how the eggs worked in that, you had three egg types in that game. You had the blue egg, uh, which emitted uh, sedative gas. Uh, you had the, the green egg that emitted emetic gas, and the red one emitted, emitted a, a lethal gas. And the reason why this is a bit of a game changer is because now we have an item that is legal to carry around, legal to drop, and you'll be able to knock people out uh, without any consequences, really. And uh, the reason why it's powerful is because you can combine that with something like a rubber duck, and you'll be able to get instant silent assassin kills for free, essentially. It's just going to be that simple. You'll be able to just drop the egg, and as they're in staggering state, as they're about to go down, drop the duck, explode it, and you'll be able to blow them up right in front of everybody, and you'll still be able to retain your silent assassin rating. It's a, it's a glitch they never fixed uh, back in the day when the tranquilizer came out. So if you didn't know, if you use a tranquilizer or any kind of sedative, while they're in the animation of, of going down on the floor to get knocked out, you can kill them in any way you want to, and even though the body is found, it will still count as like uh, an accident kill or a poison kill. It's, a, it's an interesting glitch that they've got around to fixing. This was discovered back in t Hitman 2 in 2018, 2019. And then I don't think they could fix it on a technical level. So, yeah, that's the reason why this egg is quite powerful. Um, it's probably going to be abused by quite a lot of speedrunners, but we'll see um, just how that goes on. And maybe there should be some sort of punishment if you drop the egg in front of people. Maybe there should be some sort of uh, illegality to it. Because they did do it with the, um, the chloroform in Freelancer. They made sure that the chloroform, dropping the chloroform, because it's the same effect. They made sure that dropping the chloroform was an illegal action. And they could do the same thing with the egg if it gets too powerful. But it's up to them. They usually nerf a lot of stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised. That's what they all might do. So, okay. So, I just wanted to talk about that briefly, in a way, just to, just to put that out there. Anyway, moving on. Uh, returning events, the Berlin Egg Hunt. It's not a returning event, really, but it, it, is, it is what it is. It says, attention, free starter pack players, and players who haven't played the Berlin Egg Hunt is coming back this Easter. If you haven't played the Berlin Egg Hunt, now is a perfect opportunity to put all your eggs in one basket. So yeah. I recommend it though. It is actually quite an interesting uh, egg, um, escalation. Because that's what it is. It's an escalation. But it is quite interesting. So I do recommend it if you haven't played it yet. But I don't know why it's saying a returning event. Because it's, it's actually in the game right now. Elusive targets, the Season of Undying will see the return of 25 elusive targets across its duration, given, giving players the opportunity to complete their challenges. I don't know how that's going to work. 25 elusive targets across its duration. They did say it was going to be around for one month. So they're going to release 25 elusive targets across in one month. I'm not sure how they're going to do that, because they haven't actually said anywhere in this blog post about that and how that works. But... Once they do release some information about that, I'll make sure to give you guys an update and let you know whether it'll be a community post or a video, I don't know. Next portion of the patch notes is new features. It says, well, of course I know him. Available on HTTPS, blah, 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 account.io.dk. We have enabled the option to log in using your first party account credentials. Additionally, you're now able to change your email used on your IO Interactive account. A confirmation mail will be sent to both emails. So yeah, great. You can change your email on your account new feature apparently <laughs> making your list we have added the possibility to save the challenge filters which allows players to easily locate the challenges they have yet to complete or one of the ones that they have rewards good they should have had implemented that straight away so that is a good update i think that one uh, so when you filter through your challenges to see what you've got left that you haven't unlocked yet and you go off the screen and you go back onto it it hasn't saved that what you, your actions of what you've done, so you have to go through the filters again. So now it will save it. So that's a good that's a good little uh, feature. And then it goes on to the bug fixes. So they were the only new features that are in the game. Bug fixes, platform specific, clear vision. The PlayStation Five save file thumbnails up now appear less dark. Brilliant. UI uh, graduation. Lucid targets released in February now correctly show year four in their titles. Four, year four, year four. Can't, four years we've had the same Lucid targets again and again and again. 
Man, what you know, back in the day, they said they would never do this. They said they would never re-release the loser targets. And they've done this so many times now. But you peep, they're getting new players all the time, so I guess that's you know, supply and demand. More texture. We fixed an issue where some of the thumbnails for certain items in the inventory menu and mug shots for contracts were not properly uh, textured. Cool. Environmental art. Bright lights. We have resolved an issue where one of the computer screens located in the town hall tower during the icon mission emitted a much brighter light than other ones. We pointed that out months ago in a live stream, do you remember, if you remember? I think they changed some lighting at some point during Hitman 3 and they patched it one day and I pointed that out that in the tower that there's like a huge beam of light coming from the PC. It was insane. It's blinding. It's quite funny though. Psychedelic rocks. We have fixed an issue in Farewell Mission where several rocks appear to be transparent when viewed from a specific angle. I think I've said this before but I always think why include things that are so minor to the changes i mean fair enough you're you're being transparent and you're actually transparent being the the, uh, the operative word fair enough you're being transparent with the community i've been putting in there exactly what you've been what you fixed fair enough but does it in the grand scheme of everything does it really really matter that you need to tell us that you've fixed a transparent rock in the farewell mission you know Personally, I've never noticed it. Maybe other people have, but can't be too many people that actually care about that. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, Rocky Laundry says we resolved an issue in Chongqing where the where the displays of the washing machines in the laundromat would flicker up and down rep rapidly. Well, that's why I thought they always were. I thought that's uh, just how they animated the washing machines. Maybe, so that was a bug all along. That's that's strange. Moving Shadows has resolved an issue in Freedom Fighters mission where there were visual issues during the mandatory cord board cutscene with the lighting issues and popping. Mandatory cord board cutscene. Why is that? What's a what's the cord board cutscene? I don't know what that is. Moving Shadows 2. We fixed an issue in Colorado where shadows would pop up and disappear when 47 walked alongside the western side of the fence. Again, minor. Wet lag. We resolved an issue where the Freedom Fighter mission, where 47 would clip through the water basin when drowning Sean Rose in the shed. Cool. I think I remember that, actually. Air 47. We fixed an issue in Dartmoor, where 47 would be able to walk mid-air close to a hedge near the stone stairs around the garden area. Now, if they're considering that sort of thing as, like, bugs, why... I'm not even going to bother saying, actually. It's no point. It's only going to create an argument. Unbreakable. We resolved an issue in Dartmoor in Haven Island when some, some lamps could not be destroyed. God. Bulletproof lamps, eh? <laughs> Sign me up. I want some. They all, they all float. So we resolved an issue in Amber's Island, Santa Fortuna, Mumbai, Paris, the Golden Handshake, Chong, Chongqing, Hawke's Bay, and Marrakesh, where some elements or items appeared to be floating above the ground. Kind of that. Red Dawn. We resolved an issue in Ambrose Island where the lighting reflecting on the sea in the southeast part of the map did not look natural. Lights out. We fixed an issue in Berlin where the entire screen would become dark upon rotating the camera near the bridge in Chill Out Juice Bar. This is so specific. And you know, when it comes to these really specific uh, these pa these fixes. Why or oh why or oh why haven't they fixed the saving bug on PS5? I think it's been about two years now since it's been reported and that by several people, including me, uh, several times. I don't understand why they haven't fixed that or even addressed it. Even spoke about it, just mentioned it once. They, they're fixing all these little things that, that, like I said, in the grand scheme of things, don't really matter. And you got that thing that's really annoying. Like you start the mission, the only way to get rid of it is by pausing and unpausing. It's only specific to PS5, but still, it's an annoying bug that exists, and it's just one of them things that are, that are irritating. Especially when you have OCD. I don't know, it just, it just baffles me. Anyway, lights off. We fixed an issue in Paris where parts of the ceiling near the archways and docked barge appear to be unnaturally dark. Lights off too. We fixed an issue in Chongqing 
where the screen would become black and go back to normal after entering or leaving Mr. Pritchard's apartment. Moving grates. We resolved an issue in Paris where the metal grate located above the water when standing on the barge would flicker when the camera was moving. Safety concerns. We have fixed an issue in the golden handshake where the barrier of one of the balconies was not fully connected to the floor. I can't, I still can't call that mission the golden handshake. I, I can't. To me, it's the bank. I always just call it the bank or New York. I can't call it the golden handshake. Isn't that the name of the mission? If that's the name of the mission, why are they only referring the bank to by its, by its mission name? They don't do that with any other map. They don't. They don't refer to Marrakesh as the, the, the gilded cage, for example. Anyway, safety concerns too. We resolved an issue in Chongqing where the double doors next to the laundromat would not properly be attached to the wall, and a gap in the concrete pathway would be visible above the entrance to the, the karaoke. Again, so super specific. Missing parts. We resolved an issue in Berlin where some of the parts of the sprinkler pipes inside the owner's office were missing. This goes on and on. 200 fixes, I'm not surprised. I don't know if we should go through all of this, actually, or not. Because I'm, I'm doing this live. Because this is un un unedited. Because this is how I always do it, through natural live reactions, rather than faking it. Uh... What do, in this case, with all this, the amount of stuff that got listed here, I was, I'm, I'm regretting doing this now. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe I should have just read it all and pointed out the most, the best stuff, I guess. But regardless, let's go through it anyway. We, wrong order. We fixed an issue in Dubai where the prompts to serve drinks at the bar counter in the southern part of the atrium would incorrectly state missing cognac bottle. If 47 changes his disguise twice. Okay. Ultra reflect. We resolved an issue in Dubai where one of the windows on the balcony of Ingram's bedroom was inverted colours at certain camera angles. Changing the carpet, we restored an issue in Dubai where the floor of the security room would flicker from one colour to another. There's a lot of uh, flickering colour glitches, isn't there, over the past month? That? I haven't noticed any of these though. Mind you, I haven't played much in the past month or so. Fleeting rack, we fixed an issue in Santa Fortuna where some elements would disappear at certain angles at the workshop in the village. On the roof of the workshop, under the stairs, close to the village centre and near the waterfall. That's so specific. Fleeting board, we resolved an issue in Mendoza where caution, placard and electric cables near the winery freezer would flicker at certain camera angles. Again, these little visual glitches. I'm going to skip a few because it's, it's, not, it's not really that important. Here's another one. Resolved an issue in Santa Fortuna where the hinges of the metal cabinet in the area below the bar would become visible when 47 takes a few steps back. I mean, oh, priorities. <laughs> oh, man. We resolved an issue in Mo uh, Miami, Santa Fortuna, Mumbai, the Golden Handshake, Chongqing, Hawke's Bay, and Hokkaido where 47 could clip through items or walls when taking cover. If you have a problem with that sort of thing, then... Again, I'm not going to bring it up. I'm, that's the second time I've stopped myself saying that now. Stuck in. We resolved an issue in Santa Fortuna, Mendoza, and the Golden Hunk Shake. Uh, where items, items would clip through the walls. Okay, it's the same sort of thing, but with items. Burning hot. Uh, we resolved an issue in the metal workers district in Mumbai where Hitman would be able to climb on a pile of empty cans then walked into the metal forge and get stuck inside of it. <laughs> Semi doesn't burn though, that would be quite funny. Leaf blower. We resolved an issue in Paris where 47 could get stuck after climbing on gardening equipment and bags with leaves located near the, the Dr. Barge. Coming through, we fixed an issue in Golden Handshake where 47 would not be able to reach one of the corners of the main hall without destroying the nearby window. We fixed an issue in Euler Scale where shadows on the ground and the wall would flicker when the camera is moved when exploring near the locked metal grate above the pier area. I've never seen so much in a patch notes in a game before that's like this. That's so detailed and so specific. It's genuinely crazy. Anyway, I'm going to skip a few of these because I don't want the video going on too long and people don't really want to hear all this stuff anyway because it's not really that important. 
Next is, I'll go through the next section anyways. Graphics. Star of the show. We resolved an issue where the letterbox effect would disappear during the last resort's initial cutscene whenever Ludmilla Vitrova would be shown. Window cleaning. We resolved an issue in Hawke's Bay where a glass barrier would appear on top of the glass surface on the roof. The next section is level design. Clogged toilets. We resolved an issue in Miami where players were not able to dump. Okay. No wonder it's clogged. Too many dumps. No, it says uh, players were not able to dump unconscious NPCs' bodies through the window in the toilet in Maxwell Rutter's uh, office. So they fix that. If you enjoy pina coladas, we resolved an issue in Berlin where a coconut in a chill-out bar could not be picked up despite the being highlighted when using the instinct mode. Parkour, we fixed an issue in Mumbai that allowed 47 to vault through the shelf to the roof of one of the apartments. That's cool. Uh, Stuck Santa, we fixed an issue in Holiday Hoarders mission where Agent 47 would get stuck when trying to get out of the covered planes provided by the Christmas tree pots at the main entrance of the palace. Humpty Dumpty, we resolved an issue in Marrakesh where dumping a body over the wall by the stairs of the headmaster's roof would lead to an NPC getting killed despite not falling minimum height for this to happen. There's a few spots like that, like where you dump him from like, I don't know, two feet above the ground and they die and you think, what? How, how would that kill you? Laundry day. We fixed an issue in Bangkok where 47 would get stuck in behind a door leading to the laundry room. Uh, stop the press. We fixed an issue in the show, show stop a mission where the feats challenge awarded for completing the rare scoop mission story used to appear as mission story a rare scoop. A rare scope, I should say. Yeah, I've had, a, I've, I've had several people mention that to me before about that so that is a that is actually an important fix that they've done that so good it's a shame it's just buried into a bunch of uh, non fixes I, should, I guess hidden in plain sight we resolved an issue in the apex predator mission where npcs are dumped or pushed over the railing above the dance floor would be marked as hidden despite the bodies being clearly visible this happens in like the rivers and stuff like that for example in santa fortuna or darmore as well if you kick them in the river, the bodies are still visible, but it still counts as hidden. But they can still be found, and they can still spoil your silent siren assassin rating, despite it saying body hidden. Because it's not technically hidden, is it? Wrong turn. This has resolved an issue in Mumbai where 47 would face away from the door instead of facing towards it when taking cover in the hut on top of the train yard. Here I come. We resolved an issue in Hawke's Bay where 47 would be able to enter the hiding spot without using the prompt on the ground floor of the house, meaning NPCs would still be able to detect 47. Agility check, we fixed an issue in Haven London where the guard would walk on a bench when investigating a distraction, making it more difficult to subdue him. I think we actually saw that during a stream uh, a few weeks ago. I can't remember, I forget all, but yeah. I feel like that happened. This is now I see you. So we fixed an issue in Berlin where one of the NPCs in the projection bar was missing his upper body. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I showed you a little picture as well, I thought, yeah, but he's missing his entire torso. Quite funny. Should I, they should have left it. It's quite funny. Charming. Now I see you too, which have resolved an issue in Chongqing, Night Court, Colorado and Berlin where Agent 47 would disappear through camera movement when using prompts or when taking cover. Fancy chair, we resolved an issue in Hawke's Bay where the red chair in Alma's bedroom did not allow 47 to take cover behind it. Oh my lord. Freelancer, wrong suit, and we were fixed an issue in Dubai where freelancer mode, a whiskey serving set piece found in the lounge on the fourth floor, would be considered a way to disguise, leading 47 to be considered as trespassing. Bluetooth pipes. We fixed an issue in the safe house in Freelancer where choosing the bathroom cosmetic variant, unlockable at mastery level 97, or when choosing a bathroom cosmetic from the modern furniture collection unlockable at mastery level 18, a toilet control panel would spawn up under the map. Bird carpentry. We fixed an issue with an in, in the safe house in freelancer mode where a birdhouse located near the shed would not appear to be properly attached to the tree. Wrong angles. We fixed an issue in the safe house in freelancer mode where there would be a camera clipping issues with some of the decorations in the hallway and the office. Riddle me this. I said we resolved an issue in freelance mode on the Isle of Scale where Vanessa von Robeck name would show as Vanessa von R question mark Beck. Okay, okay, okay. 
Dialogue, wrong lines. If we fixed an issue in Marrakesh where security guards located in the consulate would use placeholder dialogue audio when spotting 47 disguised as a soldier. And finally, at the end of the patch notes, there's additional fixes. The section is dedicated to fixes or changes that have happened between patches, essentially things that we can change without a patch. They didn't feature in the previous patch notes, so we're adding them here for posterity. So this is like the hot fixes of what they usually call it. Perseverance is key. We updated the Steam R asset of Hitman Mortal Assassination, and we thank that name for the thoroughness regarding this topic. Okay. First impression, when launching Mortal Assassination Part 1, players now correctly start at the ICA tutorial instead of the Sebastian Principle. Mortal Assassination Part 1? What's all that about? Why is it called that? I'm the upgrade. It says, when Mortal Assassination Part 1, Steam players try to access content that they do not own. They are now correctly directed to the relevant upgrade pack. Escape Room. We resolved an issue in the featured contract Art Lovers where players would not be able to exit. Sinful. We resolved an issue where Steam Deluxe Edition owners did not have access to the Seven Deadly Sins collection. Now they have access to the collection. Great. Microsoft Store. We fixed an issue where some PC Microsoft Store players could experience connection or crashes during the last two weeks of February. Someone actually on my Twitter actually asked me about this. And this, I'm glad this is fixed for him because this is exactly the issue that he was having. So thank you for fixing that. And hopefully that he is happy with that fix. But that concludes the, the entirety of the patch notes. Uh, I've skipped quite a few of them because they're just completely, uh, well, I wouldn't say irrelevant. But they're just not important you know just basic things that you wouldn't ever know their average player wouldn't notice it's only when you're playing this 20 hours a day out of the four uh, 24 hours in the day you have you'll notice this sort of these these kind of things honestly because i don't to be honest I've, I've noticed about two or three of these things out of the whole list and they and, and nowhere in here does it say anything about the saving glitch so yeah Anyway, as I said, that's going to conclude the uh, the patch notes. But what I will be doing is, again, I'll be doing the elusive target tomorrow, the definitive uh, guide for the Undying. And tomorrow I'll also be doing the elusive target arcade, uh, which is the Ouroboros uh, elusive target arcade. We're doing a video on that. And on Saturday, I'll sure do a video on the cosmetics, apart all the DLC packs and showcasing it all, to help you understand if you want to buy it or not. So it's up to you. So I'm, I'm buying it so you guys don't have to. So you can see it for yourself and see if you think it's worth it. So that's what I'll be doing. So yeah, there we go. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. And hit the bell icon to click all notifications to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below. Or clicking the link in the description for all the details of that. Thank you very much for all the support recently. I really appreciate it. I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.